Ecco, Klaus Hoffman. Welcome, welcome, thank you for your presence. Yes, thank you for the invitation. Okay, okay. I can hear okay. you. Okay. First, first of all, my apologies for not being able to speak in Italian to you. I, if I look at the participants, I think 99% uh, of the names is Italian, so I feel really bad. Um, but I don't speak Italian, so okay. I will do it in English. Uh, so again, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm happy to see that Anna Marie already gave a good overview of where the Floriade is, is stands now and how it is organized as an event it's going to open soon. So everything is uh, should be ready quite soon. So I thought it would, would be nice to take you back maybe 10 years ago to, to show you really briefly um, how this uh, the idea for this master plan was born and how, how it was developed in the years after. And I must say, uh, MVRDV uh, has been very actively involved in those first years in, the, in, the, in winning the bid, in designing the master plan, setting out the main concepts um, for, for all of the layers and all of the ideas that Anne Marie also has uh, shown. And in the last few years, we've been less actively involved, I would say, uh, like that. But uh, um, let me share the screen. Um, do you see the presentation? Yes, we do. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. 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 So. So. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm not sure if it's necessary, but uh, I, I'm Klaus Hoffman, a senior associate for at NVRDV, which is uh, a design practice based in Rotterdam in, in the Netherlands, founded by these three people, Wiene Maas, Nathalie de Vries and Jacob van Rijs. And our main office is uh, in Rotterdam and will always be in Rotterdam, I think. Uh, that's where the majority of the people live, but we are expanding, we are growing a lot in the last uh, years, um, uh, opening satellites in, uh, in other countries like France, Germany and, and China. In total, we are now uh, 270 staff uh, with over 30 nationalities. So um, it's quite a, a different company than 10 years ago when we were working on this uh, Floriade master plan. But what I think is um, is is visible as a current as a as a, um, a con continuous theme in in the work of MVRDV is that we. Um, uh, always try to somehow blur the boundaries between architecture and art, architecture and urbanism, and architecture and landscape, uh, which is uh, quite relevant uh, in, in all of these cases in the, in the project of uh, Floriade. Um, Floriade, for those of you that may not know, is, is, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a Dutch event, as Emily explained as well. Uh, a showcase uh, for the world and for uh, uh, everybody interested in what what the green sector, what what the quality of plants and trees can uh, can bring, and what kind of innovations are are, are there. And the first uh, Floriade was organized in the city of Rotterdam in 1960. Uh, this is a very nice postcard of that, and it shows somehow. Uh, two, two elements, uh, that, uh, the, the showcase of the landscape, the beauty of the flowers, um, but also you see the tower in the back, the Euromast, which, is, uh, which was built as a pavilion and a viewing tower for the Floriade and has become the main icon of the city afterwards. So the main goal, one of the goals of the Floriade is also to leave an impact, uh, to not just be a hit and run event, but to create something that is permanent. Um, so, and the event is organized every 10 years. Um, um, so in 2012, uh, when the um, event was organized in Venlo, a city in the south of Holland, um, 
that was the moment they had to prepare the selection for the uh, event and the city. So every time it's organized in a different city um, for 2022. That's when we did the bit and we won the bit, uh, fortunately. Um, and I think the main reason why uh, our proposal was selected is because of its location. Um, it's in Almere, it's a very interesting new town. It's the youngest city of, of the Netherlands, but it's very close to Holland, um, uh, to Amsterdam, sorry. And um, uh, I think the main quality of our proposal is that we managed to convince the, the municipality of Almere to organize this event in the center of the city. Uh, a lot of the other Floriades are organized, are built uh, on the edges of the city in, in, in places where there's already some tabula rasa, some space left or a nice landscape that can be used. Um, and well, for many reasons, uh, for the city of Almere, it would be very good to organize this event in the heart of the city because then the legacy and the, the chances to make this uh, event permanent and to have the, the qualities of this uh, uh, of this uh, Floriade uh, maintained for, the, for, for a long time were much bigger um, if you would place it in an important location. And this location uh, was also available and is already embedded in the city structure. Um, um, the, um, uh, log logistically, so uh, there's a bus line going through the site. Um, the, the water of, opens up the opportunity to create um, access by boat. Um, the cable car is is a temporary uh, mode of transport, but all of these layers somehow um, for Almere showed the opportunity to densify this, this city center more than, uh, than they could imagine at that time. Um, so this is uh, the main image of the Floriade um, and the main idea uh, representing the main idea of this Floriade being uh, creating a new neighborhood, uh, a Floriade that would be an event that would leave behind a new neighborhood where people would live, where people would go to school, uh, where people would be able to uh, visit the museum, etc. Uh, right in the heart of the city on one of its most uh, beautiful locations. Um, on top of that, how to make this interesting, how to make this neighborhood uh, meaningful and how to make this neighborhood um, worthwhile to visit as an event. And so it's not enough to create a nice neighborhood and put uh, some pavilions there. Uh, we thought it was very important to have uh, a very meaningful um, uh, idea behind the master plan, not only meaningful for uh, for the event, but also meaningful for showing how uh, a new neighborhood could could actually show uh, the future of the city. Uh, and even then, 10 years ago, uh, I mean, today we live in a reality that we are very much aware of of um, of all the urgencies that we have to deal with in our uh, in our designs, um, climate change, etc. Uh, 10 years ago, this was just. Uh, 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 a little bit less uh, prominent, but I would say quite obvious that um, that this uh, Floriade would really need to give uh, a story about that. So the first thing that we imagined, so this this picture somehow was the, the main seed for, for the idea that developed the rest of the market plan. And uh, Vini came with this picture saying, can we make a city that actually looks like this, that you experience nothing but green um, that somehow buildings maybe disappear or that the quality of, of plants and flowers, which is what Tofloria wants to show, is, is kind of exploded. Eh? It's like much more visible even than on any other Floriade before. Sorry, I remember you, there are uh, only eight minutes eh, for the end. Yes, I think other okay. people also talked a bit longer, so I will do my best. Um, okay. and, what's, and what's very important is that um, uh, it's not uh, the main, uh, what we realized, what we presented is that uh, the quality of green is not just its beauty. There's so much 
uh, value in green in many uh, uh, different ways, scientifically and uh, in terms of uh, the, the beauty, um, recreation, uh, habitat for animals, purifying water, uh, absorbing CO2, etc., creating shadow. So all of these and absorbing sound, producing food in many different ways. So this is the spectrum of, of uh, the richness of the green that we would like to put on the podium in the master plan and in the event. And here you can see then uh, if you take all those qualities of the green together, sorry, my screen is a bit slow. I'm clicking faster. If you start to put them all next to each other, you start to see already the master plan being born. Yeah, the master plan represented as a collection of qualities of green. And we call it the collection of gardens. So that's uh, the main carpet somehow that we put on the site, which was uh, chosen. Um, then this carpet would adapt to its local conditions. It would need to create a, uh, a sound wall uh, because it was also crossing the highway. Uh, it needs to cover basically uh, the existing site, but we cut it out the existing elements that would be valuable to integrate into the foliage, like a yacht club, the water, a campsite, and the, the highway. And that would form somehow the carpet on which this new green neighborhood could be developed. And as a base of this green neighborhood, we took the garden, the plot, uh, as its main building stone. This is the model that we made, like a four by four meter model that somehow also more than any typical model showed the quality of the hairiness and the, the softness of, of, of the green. This is the, the map, the master plan map, where you can see that uh, the green city is, is not just a park and the Floyard is not just a park, but it's intended to become quite a dense uh, neighborhood. You can you see here, uh, but where the green, where the plants, the, the, the function of the plants, not just the beauty of the plants, uh, would be dominant. So this is a, not a typical street in any neighborhood, but this is quite amazing if you would be able to live in, in a botanical garden or if you would be able to live in a place where normally uh, um, yeah, the city is separated from, from landscape. And then from a distance, from looking from the it, from the main center of uh, Almere, you could look at the new center, which is almost like a futuristic mirror showing the potential of, uh, of the green city in the future. Uh, as Anne-Marie also has shown already uh, in this map, um, all these gardens will be filled with trees and plants organized alphabetically. So to become, uh, to create a structure, something we thought was important for the event to create a structure that uh, could also educate people visiting the site about what each of those plants and each of those trees could, could uh, contribute to the city. We created this list of potential uh, species um, uh, that would be uh, fit on, uh, in this climate on the site. We mapped out all the properties of the selection in terms of size, in terms of growing seasons and speed, um, all kinds of needs for, for those plants. Uh, and we put it in the script. Um, and we created a special script for this that would help us to uh, uh, um, somehow orchestrate the, this, this arboretum, this, uh, this encyclopedia. What would land where? Some trees need more space, some plants need less space. And how, does, how do the seasons each uh, give a different impression of that. So you see that here in detail, one plot is actually not one species only, but it's even divided in different uh, letters in different species. So you get even within one letter, of course, um, many varieties. So that's, that's the main uh, um, base for the vegetation of the, of the site. And I think that is really important that, um, we created a master plan that, that took this as a main framework um, before the buildings come in. Yeah? So it's a very light infrastructure, uh, 
mainly there to serve the possibility to make uh, all these gardens accessible. You see that here in detail, different uh, uh, sub variants of species creating this nice combination of, uh, of different plants. And then the variety comes automatically. And then the next challenge that we uh, worked on quite a lot um, is how to not kill this garden by putting in buildings. Uh, in the end, it's not just pavilions. There's a lot of buildings that uh, will need to be built there. And um, we believe, and I think in reality, this proved still to be uh, quite the, the, the most difficult challenge, uh, I think, as you will see next year. Um, but at least we try to create a catalog of how this, the symbiosis between architecture and, um, and, uh, and, the, and the arboretum is, is not unrealistic. It, it could be done. Um, as many examples already uh, shown, but it, yeah, you need to put some effort and some uh, some extra money in that and, and care. So we developed this kind of uh, catalog of all kinds of means in which you could um, integrate planting into the architecture. Um, so these are not designs, but more like schematic uh, impressions of how these different uh, uh, elements could help to yeah, kind of make those buildings disappear. And this is then on top of uh, what Maria, uh, um, uh, Anna Maria explained. Uh, of course, then the whole neighborhood starts to uh, work together as, as, a, as a machine, as a system. So there's much more that than I can explain now in terms of smart grids and energy uh, provisions, et cetera, that somehow create this other green layer, which is not about plants, because um, that was uh, that's the additional layer that we uh, that one garden, one plot represents the symbiosis not only between architecture and landscape, but also between sustainability and architecture. And these are some examples of uh, how that uh, could work, where a building always contributes to the well-being of the plant or of the air. Um, or, or in the production of food, etc., and that's we illustrated with all these possible projects on this site, not only in the garden but also in some of the existing uh, pieces of the landscape uh, and the highway. Um, how this this contribution can be made um, to a uh, to the green city, but I have to go through this quite quickly, but. So each element, like Anne-Marie uh, explained, this bridge, each element does something, uh, adds value to this green city. It's not just a bridge, it's always um, uh, performing. Infrastructure. The bridge, which was shaped like this because to um, be able to keep uh, the beaver habitats on that spot. And well, that, this is how we imagined this, uh, this Loyada to, to become, or at least uh, we hope in the future that this neighborhood is really able to uh, somehow integrate many of these ideas of these types of uh, uh, symbiotic uh, uh, projects into its uh, site. And then uh, just one minute to close it off. I think it's interesting to show what some pictures of how it's now being developed. Maybe I don't have the most recent pictures, but you can see here um, how the grid as a sand layer is the first thing to kind of map out the master plan in order to be able to start working on the arboretum. And what I think is really nice in this picture is that you see that there was a lot of care taken in respecting existing qualities and existing trees. So hardly any trees were cut um, uh, to, to be able to create this market plan. So you see, two, two minutes, eh? two minutes. Yes, less, less. Uh, you can see here in detail uh, that uh, the, the arboretum already being planted. Uh, on the edges of each of the plots, the variety that you can see, of course, everything is still relatively small, 
So uh, I cannot imagine what this would look like in 20 years. Uh, some of the Egyptian trees that, uh, you know, just uh, win over the grid. So the grid doesn't erase any trees. Uh, people will just have to walk past by the tree. Some of the new plants and trees are surrounding it. And then the quite amazing small scale, this, if this will become quite a dense urban neighborhood, it will be uh, uh, maybe very Italian in a way that it's very small street profile crossing through uh, uh, this uh, site. Uh, and that's it. And so we hope to see you all uh, in Omnia next year, or maybe even better, come back a couple of times to see how this city is growing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the interesting uh, speech. And uh, thank you for <laughs> all.